starting over, what does it really mean? Different, different things to different people. To some, it could mean I have done all I can, but I keep failing. Now I want to start something afresh, right? To another person, it might be, I really don't know myself. Now I want to know myself. To someone else, it might be that I've always been a high fly in my life. I've always achieved everything I want to, but now I'm realizing that I can do more, but I really don't know how to do more. And to some, it could be that they've always encountered success. They, they are successful, but a time comes in their life when with all the success, despite all the success, they feel so empty inside. So with all these people, there's a challenge. How do we start over again? Am I qualified to, to, to talk about this? Yes and no, depending, but let me just share a little bit of my experiences with you. The, the, the gentleman you're looking at has buried a child. So I have lost a child, my first son and my only son, right? My wife has lost two pregnancies and one of them almost took her life. I have lost money, seven digits in financial investments. I have been duped in seven digits by people I trusted. I have lost a job at the time I needed a job the most. I, I have, then I had two lovely, beautiful, queenly girls. And then my wife was pregnant with a set of twins. And two weeks to her delivery, I was sacked. Four children, a wife who had not worked in the, in the previous seven months because the pregnancy was so, so intimidating. Let me just put it that way. Mm. Right? And the only person everybody was looking at, they didn't have a job. Right? I have been on the brink of divorce. Wow. Right? I have worked without knowing myself. Collins talked a lot about accepting oneself. I have rejected who I knew myself to be a lot of times. Mm. Lost my self-esteem, lost my self-confidence. I had been in a place where my mental health was severely under attack to the point I contemplated suicide. So I wouldn't know if I am qualified to talk to you about starting over, right? But if there is anything around what I've listed that shows something around what you're going through or what you're, what you're going through, please just listen to me, right? In the midst of all the things I said, especially after I lost my job, I didn't know what to do. I, am, I, I wasn't a business person, right? Because I grew up thinking that business was only for some certain kind of people. Not everybody could do business. So I, I consider myself an employee. And my, my, my life vision was, let me work in wherever I was working for a number of years, and then I retire and then start consulting. And then in the middle of my age, that was cut short. So I didn't know what else to do. But I also didn't want to go back to banking because I was a banker, a marketer. I didn't want to go back because of the pressure. Man, the pressure in banking at that time was, was crazy. I didn't want to go back there. And I didn't have any other skill to utilize. So I was stuck. I was stuck, right? But in the midst of being stuck, three people, three people ministered life to me. And they're not the kind of people you actually would find life with. One of them is Chief Obafemi Olo, late. Okay. If, if, okay, what happened? We, we had an issue about money in the house, and then my wife spoke to him because he happened to be a senior friend. And then he, he called me, and we were talking. And in all the things I was talking about was, it's just because I don't have a job. It's because I don't have a job. It's because I don't. And the guy said, are you the first person that will not have a job? Mm. Ah. Reality check. Reality check, man. That eat me. So he went to his library and brought out a small book. Okay. I don't know if it was written by him or for him, but just about about my law. And he said, I'm not going to give you this book to read everything. Just read these pages, just like three or four pages, where Chief Obafi Maolowo described how he lost his job as a teacher and he couldn't fend for his family. Right. And at the same time, he started writing applications to the to, to UK schools and he got admission and there was nothing at home. He was going to go for like 
12 months or 18 months, and there was nothing to leave back at home. And the wife actually said to him, you just go. I will take care of the home front. When I read that story, something jumped at me. It is not a cause to lose a job. It is not a taboo to lose a job. If Oba Fremi Aulowo could lose a job and start life all over again, mm. then it is not, it is not the meaning for me to start life over again. Second person, Steve Jobs, late also, mm. um, founder of Apple. Yes. What did I learn from Steve Jobs? Everybody talks about his creativity, right? But I drew strength from his background. Do you know Steve Jobs till death never knew his biological parents? And it tormented him all through his life. Mm. Right? Steve Jobs dropped out of school, not because he was too intelligent. Yes, he was brainy, but because he couldn't fund it. Right? So it told me one thing. Failure isn't a person. No. Failure is a process. And failure only delivers on you when you choose not to try again, when evidences around you suggest you can. Mm. As long as you try again, failure is a feedback. And what is a feedback? Checking your reality, checking your result, checking what you got and finding the variance and then asking yourself what, what is responsible for this variance. So for me, I stood back for the first time and said to myself, Yomi, I am not a failure. I'm only getting a feedback that I am not fit for the employment market. So what should I do? Fantastic. Right. right. So, 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 so in all these things, there was a serious mind shift that was happening within me, even though I didn't know at that time. Then the, the third person that greatly influenced me, even I think I just wrote like one or two of his YouTube videos. And I want to say this, what are the things you do on, on, on social media, right? Mm -hmm. I, I encountered this guy, his name is Danda Pani. He is a monk, right? He's a monk, I am a born again Christian. And for me to say, I listen to a monk, some people will say, yee, but guess what? This is about life. And you've oh, got yeah. to do what you need to do to forge ahead in life. So this particular day I was in the house just looking through different YouTube series and I, I chanced upon him. And one of the things you need to realize is there are times in life when your lifting up will be a function of chance. You might not plan it. You might not prepare for it, but a time could come when you will get access to a material, a relation. In, in fact, I was talking to some people one day and God said to me, he said, when... I'm about to open you up to a new season in your life. I bring a relationship your way. So wow. relationships, relationships birth new season. So whatever it mm. is you're doing with relationships, understand seasons are tied to relationships. I don't know why I said that, but I guess that is for somebody. Time, chance, so, and alignment. So I chanced upon Dandapani. Mm -hmm. And Dandapani, I think, came from one of these Buddhist countries. And after serving in the monastery for some time, decided he wanted to live in New York. He had never lived in New York. He had never lived in, in, in a metropolitan city like that or a cosmopolitan city. But he said, he want, and he didn't have money. And this guy said something. He said, because of the knowledge he had learned in the monastery, he knew that even though he didn't have money and he was stepping into the grounds of New York, he, he began to borrow he would never find his foot because he will live on being a borrower. Why? Because whatever activities you begin to do, you are creating neural pathways in your brain. What is a neural pathway? Neural pathway is, is basically neural connections that forms your activities, your decisions, your behaviors. Now, what happens is the moment you begin to do things and you continue to do things, your brain forms those neural pathways from a, a single line, right? It, it can... It can become thick as, as my hand. And when it becomes thick, it becomes an habit. Yes. When it becomes an habit, breaking it becomes difficult. And that is why you tell yourself, New, New Year Day, I'm, I'm resolving to do this. On the third day of the month, you're already back to your old self. Why? Because there is a neural pathway that has been set in you. Right? So to change that habit, you need to go back to that neural pathway and do something there. Right? So he said, he said if I, I knew that if I begin to borrow, 
I have enslaved myself to borrowing because my brain is now aligned to borrowing. Borrowing. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And when I learned that, I said to myself, I am where I am because of the habits I have formed. Mm. Where I am is not me. Mm. It is basically the alignment I have aligned myself with the habits. So if I can change my habits, I can change myself. In fact, if I can change who I perceive myself to be, then I can change my habits. So going from those three people, my mindset began to change. And next thing was to begin to change decisions around me. Wow. Wow. I began to change decisions. What were the decisions I changed? Number one, I began to study people whose life I wanted to be like. Now, I'm a born again Christian. I'm a yes. Jesus boy, lover of Jesus. And everything I am is, is tied to him. But I had to step, take a step back a little from studying Genesis to Revelation. Right? I needed to study people I knew I could still see, like, see around, right? And, and look at their story. Do their stories look like mine? Okay. Right, because it was more like I was under a cross. So I began to study. Look at Miles Monroe. Look at Tony Robbins, um, okay. Stephen Corbin, John Max. Mm -hmm. And I discovered one thing. All of them had my kind of background. So you were not alone. I wasn't alone. So it told me one You're thing. Not alone. It told me one thing. It is not. It is not a mistake to be born in a poor parentage or with a poor parentage, but to be a mistake to die poor. Right. So with them, I began to do one thing. I, I, I began to look at critical things in their lives. What were their beliefs? Because understanding that the, the belief you, 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 you grab can, can change your life or can mar your life. What were their beliefs? What were their values? What were their motivations? What were their views of the world? Mm -hmm. Once, so, so anytime I take any of their books, and, 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 and I didn't see these people one on one. Right? I interacted with their spirits, with their soul, through their books, through their videos. But when I opened their books, I knew what I was looking for. What is Tony Robbins' belief? Mm. What is Stephen Covey's belief? What did he believe? What did Miles Munway believe from working from a 13, 13 people home to become the, the celebrity and, and the name? And I discovered that these guys had beliefs that they didn't have. Oh. Number one, I felt I was under a cross. I felt I was not good enough. They felt they had opportunity to change the world, right? I, I, I felt there was nothing good about me, but these guys, even before they did one good thing in their life, they believed they were the best in anything they were gonna do. Wow. So I said to myself, before I can become anything, I have to first believe I am the best in it. This is how, how life works. You become what you become externally by becoming it first internally. Your outside will not change if your inside doesn't change. So if you're not able to see yourself within as who you want to see yourself outside, you would only be chasing shadows. One of the things that, that really helped me was the fact that I opened myself to, to information, to, to new knowledge. And not only to, to new knowledge, but I decided to act on the knowledge. And, and one of the key things, one of the key knowledge was the, the law of creation. How are things created? Mm. So, so I discovered, just like I said before, if you call a carpenter to your house to build you a wardrobe and he comes to your, to your kitchen or to your, to your bedroom, as he's measuring, the guy is having an internal representation within him. He's looking he's at the stickers, the height, the, yes. what it could before, accommodate. Before that gentleman leaves your house, there is already a mental picture of the final product of that cupboard in his mind Absolutely. and he will go back to his showroom to go and design according to what he had already pictured in his mind mm. if he does not picture he does not saw any wood so i realized that if i have to build a life for myself i need to first picture that life within me and that was why everybody that has spoken ahead of me would ask you what do you what want what do you want what and i'm going back want? to that question what do you want Whatever it is that has happened in the past is in the past, mm -hmm. right? You've got to come to the point where you ask yourself, what do I want? Because what you want now, Prof, I make a talk about, about deja vu, right? Yes. Your thoughts is magnetic. Your imagination pulls resources. When you picture who 
you want to become, when you picture what you want to do, and this is where many people find it hard because we, we just go about doing physical things, not realizing where the power comes from. It's from inside. Once you are able to picture who you want to be on the inside or what you want to do, the power of what you hold inside you is able to pull all the resource you have towards you. I'm going to share with you a personal story before I leave, a personal story before I leave on this process. Because this is a fundamental thing that most of us, I, I was a fearful person. I do not like taking risks. But when I understood this ability, yes, risk taking became like breakfast to me. Because I understood that if I can picture it and hold it in my heart for a considerable period of time. In fact, neuroscientists will say, if, you're, if you can feel your subconscious an image of something for eight times, your subconscious will hold it. So I designed a model for myself. I call it 310. Three what is 310? Every three hours, I picture what I want for 10 minutes. Three, uh, three ten. ten. Yeah, three every, ten. Every, every three, three minutes, hours. Every three, every three hours. hours. Every three hours, I picture. Minutes. For 10 minutes, I'll picture what it is I want. Wow. In different every three aspects hours. of your life. Yeah, at times, I might not even do different aspects. Yeah, when, when I'm doing my, my will of life, yes. But when I'm intent on setting a goal, when I'm intent on getting something, this is what I do. I hold the picture of that thing. And for a number of days, every three, three hours for 10 minutes, I play out that video in my mind. What am I doing? Emeka has said, your subconscious mind dwells on three major things, graphics, emotions, thoughts. So I'm feeding graphics, thoughts, and emotions into my, into my subconscious eight hours, eight times every day. Neuroscientists have said, if I can do for eight times, my subconscious will pick it. And once it picks it, once it picks it, guess what? I rest. It my become, subconscious begins to... I've given him the work. Attract it. I've given him the work. And this is how, this is how I, I buffered my program called Unleash the Power in Your Identity. Fantastic. Because I understood this. So I'm not saying to you, to you something I've not practiced. I'm saying to you something I have lived. And I live and I will keep living. So I understand that at different times of the day, and I want you guys to listen to this. At different times of the day, your subconscious mind shows you flashes of things. Mm -hmm. Right? But there are two cardinal points in a day that your subconscious mind will show you things just before you sleep and just before you wake up. Wow, wow, wow. Just before you sleep. And just before you wake up, your subconscious mind wants to communicate with you. So I was in my bed one early morning as I was about coming out of sleep. I had start a program, teach people how to unlock the power in their identity. Call Larry Oshola, call Kendall Wale Olojabi and start that program. Excuse me. I didn't know anything about identity. What, what I was planning to do wasn't even related to identity. But because I had known that my subconscious mind can communicate with me, I knew where it was coming from. Boom. So um, I'm sure, like, like I'd said before you started in the beginning, all of us mm. have our different stories. Yeah. In fact, anyone who's still alive and breathing, there are aspects in your life that you've mm. mastered that area. And of course, there are mm. other areas where you are still on a journey about. Yeah. You know? So for me, in 2007, my life changed completely. And just mm. by the way, for everyone on the audience, I'm a blind person. Um, and I've learned to say that with a big smile. Because for me, in 2007, my reality or what I thought it would be changed forever. Why? I had been um, not diagnosed on time for glaucoma. I was, um, I was a regional expatriate. <laughs> I'm an engineer by training um, in my organization. I, I mean, I was already traveling the world. The, the pathway of what my career was going to be was clear. I was in the leadership pipeline development of my um, organization. 
we were not many female engineers so you can imagine that my acceleration process was second to none then i mm. got the news that uh, my case was so bad that my right eye was practically not seen anymore and my left eye had like barely seven percent vision and i i i my life was over and truly life as i would have imagined it ended that day with that announcement mm -hmm. but over the years what has happened i'd gone to my oh first we salvaged to balance me out and we tried everything that was immediately possible hoping to reverse this medical report mm -hmm. but it did not happen that way being a responsible child of my father i'd gone to my line manager and i told him the company has invested so much in me the plans for me were clear they should hand me someone to um to to coach to succeed me while i bowed out because i didn't even know that there were options you know and my line manager who was a european only asked me what question and that question is the same thing that we've been asking from the beginning of this program till now he asked me what do i want because for him, he did not see my disability as a limitation. Mm. I did not know, but he did mm. not see it based on his own exposure and experience. Mm. And I remember that day I made my way to the restroom and sat on the floor and I wept because I did not believe I would still have an opportunity. And the person who unlocked that cubicle bathroom door and came out was a new person. It was not the same person that went into that cubicle. Yeah. And I went on to have a career for 11 more years, worked across Africa. Um, and, and, I, and I mean, for like at least six years, I, I mean, I returned to Nigeria in 2012, still working for the organization as a senior leadership person with my disability across um, 15 countries in Africa wow. until I was like, I really wanted to go into diversity and inclusion as a career, just to help people know that, you know, if you, if, if you were ready to do what it was going to take, you are unlimited. And then for the most important one, I had to learn that I am worthy, that mm. God loves me, that mm. I am made in his image, even though now I'm blind. You know, when I listened to the five senses test, I was like, those are my reality. People don't gossip around me, I hear everything. <laughs> and you know, I've, I've learned to be grateful and to be mm. contagiously joyful. Wow. And, and wow. that's why, yeah, and earn opportunities to come to these platforms and then mm. be able to share also and just to know that look we might all have our different stories but mm. we can own our stories we can miss the best of our stories awesome. we can awesome. breathe and and live and and rock our stories i appreciate your story the because this is the story of the human spirit the human spirit is indestructible. And we need to understand this, everybody. Mm -hmm. See, 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 see. What we add inside of us is not oxygen. No. What you add inside of you is the breath of God. When, when I teach people in my course, I, I, there, there's a, a, a section where I talk to them about the breath of God. You are not, see, you are a spiritual entity having a physical exercise upon the earth. You are not physical before being spiritual. You are spiritual before being physical. God just had to put you inside this king so that you can inhabit this earth. The it's only reason because this, this is your container. This is not you. Right? And that's what the Lakwa has proven. Right? And, and I, I see what she said. She said the person that walked out of that bathroom wasn't the person that walked in. A point in your life comes. When the you that leaves a decision or a, an event is not the you that walked in, that is when you know your change has come. When I had the instruction off on leash, I didn't know anything. But guess what? Between the time I had it and the time the program started, I had devoured 22 books. Mm. 22 books. So the person who started it wasn't the person who heard it. And this is one, one of the things that is critical when you have a vision for your life, it is not the person that birthed it. It's not you who birthed it that will begin to do it. Why? Because you will be taken through a, a process in your life where every, remember we said your subconscious can pull everything, in, even if it is relationships. 
even if it's not like, I, I can remember when I was planning for the program, at a point, I thought I had got, done everything, sent to my mentor, and he said, your mentor thumbs up, very good. And then I had my spirit. Your mentor has said good, but now let me teach you what you need to put additionally. And wow. additionally meant another 11 books. And guess wow. what? There are times I will wake up and I will hear the name of a book. There are times I will be reading a book and I will see another book within the book and I will go and get the book and I will see what I was looking for. Guys, do never limit your subconscious. What you need is not money. No. What you need is a picture of what you want. What do you want? Is it a family problem? Is it financial problem? Is it health problem? See, when you decide on what you want and you allow your subconscious to align with it, every resource you need will come on to way. you. Thank you so much, Yomi. One, one, one last word. So Thank to you, give Go hope, ahead. Mm -hmm. to give hope, to give hope. The Lord said something about your story. Listen to me. God doesn't waste anything. No, your story is God's instrument to launch you out. Your story is the message somebody else would hear that would change their lives. We just had the Lord and we, we, we felt shiver. You just add me. And I could see in this comment section, people were saying, wow, wow, wow. That's my story. I wasn't proud of that story. Right now, it's another story for another day. But I tell you one thing. Your lifting is in your story. Absolutely. Don't, don't reject your story. No. Don't reject your story. No. God bless you. If there was God hope for me, if I could rise up, you can. I love you guys. God bless Thank you. Thank you so much, Yomi. Thank you.